it's a very big privilege to me to be with you peoples who love freedom. I'm very thankful to you, Birchers, and especially to Mr. Art Thompson to invite our group from Poland and me to talk about the Polish fight for freedom. To understand our current situation, we need to go back to our history. During the first 12 months of World War II, Poland was Britain's most important ally. Polish pilot played a key role in the Battle of Britain. They shut down 20% of the total number of enemy aircraft shut down by the British forces in that battle. Referring to the pilots who fought in the Battle of Britain, Winston Churchill said, never in the field on, of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. Half a century later, Queen Elizabeth remarked, if Poland had not stood with us in those days, the candle of freedom might have been snuffed out. Throughout World War II, Polish troops fought on land, sea, and air, alongside with Western allies in Britain, Norway, North Africa, Italy, France, Belgium, Holland, and Germany. Field Marshal Harold Alexander, commander of the Allied forces in North Africa and Italy said, if it had been given to me to choose the soldiers I would like to command, I would have chosen the Poles. After World War II, when Poles came under communist Russian occupation, some 80,000 Polish servicemen continued to fight hunting, hiding in forests. The last one of them was killed in action in 1963 in the part of Poland where I grew up. It so happened that I was born in the same year uh, of 1963 when the Poles are depraved of their own country. They hand down their love of freedom from generation to generation, very much like relay runner pass the baton. At this point, a question suggests itself. Why did such a brave nation lose its independence. Ever since this happened in 1795, the Poles have been fighting to get it back, but with only modest results. I believe there are three reasons for this. First reason is the loss of God's blessing. Poland was the first country in the world to adopt republican ideals. It was a kingdom, but its kings did not wield absolute power. They swore an oath to respect the rights of their citizens, and the citizens had a right to disobey the king if they infringe upon the rights of the people. Poland, right from its inception, gave shelter to all the persecuted peoples of Europe and beyond, Jews, Armenians, Russians, Germans, and the Dutch, among others. In a sense, Poland, with its tolerance and religious freedom, was a forerunner of United States of America, in 1573, Poland was the first country in the world to outlaw religious discrimination in a charter called the Compact of Warsaw that provided 
religious freedom to all denominations without exception. The charter was welcomed by Polish Protestants and Catholics alike. Only the Catholic bishops were not happy about it. What followed was a period of a cultural development and economic prosperity. The typically referred to as a golden age of Poland. The Polish Republic was in the time the largest country in Europe by area. Polish cavalry units call it the winged hussars, hussars were invincible for 200 years. In 1683, they famously repulsed the Islamic invasion of Europe at the Battle of Vienna. Unfortunately, the Jesuits were brought to Poland and their machinations initiated a per period of political intrigue that resulted in the Polish elites changing sides in favor of counter-reformation. Some 50 years later, in 1655, Poland suffered a spectacular, spectacular and crushing defeat at the hands of Swedish troops. It was a turning point in the Polish history that marked the end of Poland's good fortunes. Poland abandoned its republican foundation of a free society in a free state, and this eventually led to fall the great republic. To this day, the Poles have not fully recovered their awareness of God's laws on freedom and responsibility, or on the role of the states in people's life. There is a certain kind of national awareness referred to in America as one nation under God, which is lacking in Poland. And I think this was the first reason of Poland's decline from the 17th century onwards. The Poles turned away from God, and God withdrew his blessing. The second reason is poor civic awareness of the Poles. After losing the statehood at the end of 18th century, the Poles attempt five armed bids for independence. All these efforts were to no avail. It's a tragic history. Towards the end of 19th century, many members of the Polish elites realized Poland will never be able to regain independence unless the entire society receives patriotic education, including uh, the peasants who at that time were still under serfdom in Poland. Many young people sacrifice their wealth, careers, health, and often the li their lives to carry the torch of patriotism and love of freedom to poor tenant farmers across the country. Within several decades, their effort bore wonderful fruit. At the time when free oppressive European empires Russia, Germany, Austria bled each other white in World War I. There were almost one million Poles under arms in various armies, including the so-called Blue Army of Polish-American volunteers um, <coughs> trained by the Americans not far from here, in the Canadian town Niagara-on-the-Lake, with significant support from President Woodrow Wilson administration in 1918, the Poles regained their independence after 123 years of captivity. Two years later, in 1920, when the massive armies of Russian Bolsheviks 
begin their march west to conquer the world, the valiant Poles stood in their way. This time, not only members of the nobility took up arms, as had been the case in the previously, previously failed uprising, but also the Polish peasants, peasants and workers joined the war effort out of their patriotic pride and dignity. In that war, also the great sons of America, the volunteer pilots of the 7th Kościuszko squadron, joined our struggle. The Russian communists were defeated and chased away back to Asia. In 1926, in the 115th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence of United States, the Poles presented the American nation with many volumes of birthday wishes signed by 5.5 million Polish citizen, citizens without of no internet in this time. <laughs> it was a mass, mass expression of gratitude for the gratitude for help America gave Poles during and after World War I. Unfortunately, during World War II, Polish patriotic allies were dis decimated and exiled across the world. The Russian occupation proved to be worse than the German. As one of our intellectuals, Józef Matzkiewicz, put it, the Germans are killing our bodies. But Soviets are killing our souls. The Poles today still long to be free, but too many of them have been successfully indoctrinated with socialism and statism. This is why the current Polish ruling party, Law and Justice, did not respond to President Donald Trump's appeal to curb bureaucracy and socialism in Poland. Under the guise of conservatism and taking advantage of poor Republican awareness among the Poles, the Law and Justice Party has been introducing more and more socialism and left-wing ideas, ideas from European Union. Unless the Poles realized that it is God, not the state, who gave them freedom and offers his blessings, their mind will remain captive. <laughs> Finally, the third reason is the shortage of patriotic, morally sound elites in the present day Poland. In 1980, 18, God gave us great wise leaders who led the nation to independence, Piłsudski, Paderewski, Dmowski. But on the eve of the World War II, we were short of good leaders. And we are short of good leaders today. The man who epitomizes the treason of the elites is Lech Wałęsa. He turned out to be a communist secret policy informant, subordinated to Russia. He betrayed the Solidarity mass movement by signing the infamous deal with the communists called the Round Table Accords. This treacherous agreement enabled the communists to keep their grip on politics, economy, and mass media in Poland. What is more, among the Catholic bishops were secret communist agents who provide, provided ideological support for the communists. Today, communists still pull the strings in Poland. We could recently see a proof that this is indeed true when 
an attempt was made to clear the judiciary of the communist holdovers, secret agents and communist judges. At the decisive moment, the reform was vetoed by supposedly patriotic president Andrzej Duda, two weeks after President Trump visited Warsaw. It is a disgrace, and the free Poles will never accept it. For this reason, our organization go against the tide, strive to educate the Polish nation, and bring forth its new leaders, morally sound and wise political leaders. So help us God. Thank you. God bless you.